This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 67, Seven Startup and Business Tips by Ludovic VA of thegoodlifemanifesto.com. And I'm Dan, I am your host here on the podcast, reading to you every single day to help you optimize your business life. And if you have any topic requests for us, please share those at oldpodcast.com. That's where you can get in touch with us. That's oldpodcast.com. And now let's get right to it as we optimize your life. Seven Startup and Business Tips by Ludovic VA of thegoodlifemanifesto.com More and more people are interested in setting up their own business as it is hyped as being the only way to achieve freedom and financial independence. Being an advisor to companies over the years, managing my own business, and being the CEO of a company, I have seen firsthand and in others what should be done if you want to succeed. Warning, entrepreneurship is not for everyone. Let me first warn you, being an entrepreneur is not easy, and it most definitely is not for everyone. It is hard, stressful, and required an absolute dedication in the beginning, and the beginning can last a while, that not everyone can do. If you do choose that that is the path you want to take, here are some tips for how to deal with everything on your path to success. One, keep an emotional detachment. You are not your company. Yes, it is your baby. Yes, you want it to succeed. But keep in mind that even if for some reason it fails or stumbles on its way to success, it does not make you a failure. This is important to remember because entrepreneurs are, understandably, very connected to the business we have ventured into. We have poured our blood, sweat, and tears into it. And if someone says something bad about it or rejects the idea, then it's easy to take it personally. The problem with that is that getting emotional about this and not being detached keeps you from being able to use the best tool you have. Instead, take the rejection and ask for feedback on it. Either it will teach you how to deal with objections better, or it will give you ideas on how to improve. Two, have a plan B. Have a vague idea of what will be your plan of action if your initial actions do not bring the desired results. But don't work on the details and don't work on a plan C until you realize your initial plan should be dropped. There are a few reasons for this. A, you should be spending that time making plan A work. And B, it gives you an out. Keep your focus on plan A. Make it work. Only if it's really, truly impossible, start working on plan B. Three, don't look for who or what to blame. It is what it is. I love this phrase. Here's why. You can spend time and energy looking for who or what is to blame for a problem that happened. You can spend time and energy venting to and about it. Or you can accept that it happened and look for a solution. This doesn't mean you shouldn't hold people accountable. It simply means that it should be part of a solution and not just to let off steam. If an employee made a mistake, or heaven forbid you did, make sure everyone knows how not to let this happen next time and fix it. Once it's done, move on. The amount of energy that people go to to find who's to blame is an absolute waste of time. Focus on a solution. Focus on setting up a process to avert such problems in the future. Four, don't be afraid to make mistakes. People are afraid of making mistakes, of being rejected. Why? Because it hurts and humiliates us, or they perceive it that way. Change the way you perceive it. When creating something, there are plenty of mistakes made because it's something new. It is impossible to do everything right, always from day one. I once sold insurance in France. We would get our leads by setting up a booth at a mall getting people to agree to be called about insurance, and then calling them. I would attack each person that passed by me. I would then call them all. My associates would pick and choose. They filtered who to interest, and they then additionally filtered who they would call. Their success ratio was higher than mine, but my overall numbers were much higher than theirs, simply because I wasn't afraid of being rejected. Same thing with dating. I'm not afraid to go to the best-looking girl in the room. Sometimes I get shot down, Sometimes I don't. And that's how I get dates with girls who are way out of my league. Don't be afraid to make mistakes or to be rejected. It's the only way to get the big successes. Five, move to the big pond. I have cold called or cold emailed my way to the executives of some of the biggest companies in the industries I've dealt with. How? I try. At worst, they don't answer or they say no. 
But don't stay in the small pond just because you're the big fish there. Jump over to the big pond and go after the big fish there. 6. Keep moving. I used to study martial arts for many, many years. One of the things ingrained in me is that no matter what happens, I need to keep breathing. Same thing in business. No matter what happens, keep moving. There's a setback? So what? Keep moving. Something painful happened? That definitely is annoying, but keep moving. Continuing with your actions is the best way to remedy any setback. The reason for it is simple. If you don't keep moving, you won't succeed, and success is the best therapy for all of the pain you endured on your way there. 7. Remember that it will never be easy. It never becomes easy. There will always be problems. Problems don't go away, they just get better. What does it mean? Maybe the problem at first was getting enough clients. Now the problem is hiring someone to manage the clients. In the future, you'll realize that you have a problem. The revenues and expenses aren't being managed properly, so you need to hire someone for that. So again, there will always be problems. Don't get discouraged because of that. You just listened to the post titled Seven Startup and Business Tips by Ludovic VA of thegoodlifemanifesto.com. And if you're a startup owner, this is for you. Running a business is just plain hard. Endless to-do lists, employees to take care of, and your ever-present bottom line. So first of all, kudos to you for staying on top of it, but I want to tell you about Gusto. Gusto built an easier and more affordable way to manage payroll, benefits, and more. They help over 100,000 businesses with tasks like automated payroll tax filing, simple direct deposits, free health insurance administration, 401ks, onboarding tools, you name it, Gusto made it easy. 94% of customers say Gusto streamlines payroll and benefits, and we agree here on the Optimal Living Daily team, we use Gusto for our payroll. Plus, they really care about the small business owners they work with. Their support team is attentive and helpful. And since money can be tight right now, you'll get three months free once you run your first payroll. Just go to gusto.com slash OSD and start setting up your business today. You'll see what I mean when I say easy. Again, that's three months of free payroll at gusto.com slash OSD. G-U-S-T-O dot com slash OSD. Thank you to Ludovic for giving us permission to share his work. And something I didn't mention about him last time I narrated one of his articles is that he also has a podcast. It's called Radio Manifesto The Good Life. And it's about self-improvement in various areas of life from health to personal development to financial management and a whole host of thought-provoking topics. Tune in to be inspired on how to find happiness and live a better life. Again, that's called Radio Manifesto, The Good Life, and you should be able to find that wherever you get your podcasts. And of course, for a lot more, come by thegoodlifemanifesto.com. And that's it for another edition of Optimal Startup Daily. Hope you have a great rest of your weekend, and I'll be back again with you tomorrow for the Monday show, where your optimal life awaits.